VJing is a live performance of visual media. In their performances, VJs interact with technologies in ways which subvert and evolve current interfaces, presenting qualities such as performativeness, expression, and strong personal style. Through the development of interfaces in response to the understanding of a VJ's work, we can learn how to develop fresh styles of interaction which exploit these qualities. The subtleties and nuances of a VJ's use of technology, which exhibit concepts such as expressiveness, may not be achieved through a simple observation or dialogue with VJs. In this film we present a design process based around a short video documentary, developed with a view to framing engagement with the creative processes which shape an individual artist's performance. This served as a starting point for a workshop, at which we established a dialogue with the VJs by presenting their own work back to them. This provided a forum in which the VJs were able to freely discuss their practice, not only in the context of their representation in the film, but also in the context of the practice of other VJs. By using documentary film as a catalyst for discussion, we aimed to provoke the VJs to elaborate upon or respond to those aspects which were inaccurately represented, and in doing so move towards a truer understanding of their performance, which could then be used to inform the personal design of interactive systems for VJs. Um, 3D Disco is quite a tongue-in-cheek strand of visuals that we're developing. It's quite sort of pitch, 80s pop, that style of thing. It gets a massive response with the audience, but it's actually quite complicated stuff to make. It looks very cartoony in style, but and there's a lot of effort goes into to creating the visuals, and it's a little bit of a, a black art. In all honesty, because I was like VJing all the clips and doing all that, I wasn't paying a huge amount of attention to the um, to the audience. I was more just focusing on the job at hand. It was funny, like even during the set, Keith's like saying to me in the background, it's like, oh yeah, we need, we need to change that club, but you know, just speed that up a bit, slow it down, drag it out. Blah, blah, blah. You know, it's like, it never stops, especially with Keith. He never stops thinking about what he's going to do next. You know, he's only just finished one thing and he's on to another, you know, but... Using visuals was an extension of DJing, really, because the tools are now available through Miss Pinky. Time coded vinyl so you can actually control video inside the computer. Well, for me, I'm a guitarist, and the visual thing for me is ambiguity in terms of causality with the kind of interfaces that I'm using, whether to search band stuff or Nintendo Wii's. I'm keen to play around with any sort of technology that's, that is available. If I'm doing a really kind of intricate scratch within a frame, the video doesn't actually move at all, so that's the, that's the, the biggest problem for me at the minute. I'm a, a research student at Newcastle University doing a project on VJing. I'm collaborating with musicians to create a concept performance band. Being a member of the band, you're always feeding off each other, you know. My VJing is a little different in this, but it's, it's purely concert visuals. So each visual corresponds to each song. The purpose of VJ, I guess, is, in my eyes, is to create, you know, an intrinsic link between music and image. The musicians feed off what they see on the screen as much as I feed off what I hear. An installation. The idea is to kind of make uh, an environment out of this bar with um, kind of text messages flying about the environment and, um, and people being able to contribute those text messages and kind of turning it into like a kind of a storytelling cave. So hopefully we're going to have multiple layers of the act of interpretation as people see what's on the walls, be inspired, add new things. And so we could have a whole chain of events and, um, and we're going to have graffiti writers and all sorts kind of you know, taking this computer text that we have and drawing it out in, you know, calligraphy and tag styles. In the venue, we're going to have six by four foot screens, so that gives you an 18 foot wide canvas. So it's not immersive, but it's certainly big enough to catch your eye. We're going to have somebody standing in front of it with a remote, controlling it as if they were ha as if they had a magic wand. We have a web server running, and we have various computers around the venue. 
and so there's a little web page where you can write a text message, hit go, text message comes into the web server, it gets written into a folder on the hard drive, and then every uh, polling interval that we have yet to determine, uh, this patch will then basically bring in all the text messages that are waiting. And so here we are on the left, and our text messages have just come in. And so with my magic wand, I can basically start selecting them, and I can move them about. And so basically wherever I point my magic wand, our text messages yeah. will fly. As VJs, uh, we do stuff in the moment. We, we are all about the real time, and not about you know, making the perfect music video. An installation that is entirely dynamic, where there's not a kind of a VJ always pumping in images, where there is going to be a performer, it is a performed thing, but it's basically, you know, it's about creating an environment that people can contribute in. The workshop began with the presentation of extended versions of the film portraits you've just seen. Each portrait was followed by a group discussion in which the VJs discussed the points raised by the film, both as an immediate vocal response and in preparation for their forthcoming creative responses. Very, inter well, very interesting how audience can become part of the show as well, or have control of the show, or, which I'm sure we'll talk about key text later, is, is very much what some of the ideas we have. And if through audience participation or manipulation you can change the, the feel of the graphics or the visuals and create the show and create an immersive, immersive environment, then it, it's all really interesting and more where I would aim to go to. I kind of get bits and bobs and then, you know, gather like clips that I've got samples and make them all together live and it creates kind of an altogether new meaning. It's like, I was just thinking that the really strong theme that's running them throughout this is trying to just try and create some narrative in what you're doing. Um, whereas a lot of the stuff I'm actively trying to do is actually try to fracture narrative as well. And that's where the needle dropping theme comes from. Um, it was actually really funny when um, the room on another time we did this got flooded by Bluetooth and the remote started stopped working and you had to do it with a mouse, then that really changed the, the, the dynamic of performance and all of a sudden with the remote I'm able to have a conversation with other people, uh, you know, explain what's going on, pass it over to them, they can have a go, you know, that's a really powerful thing. Whereas the minute you're back hunched over the laptop, then all of a sudden that whole kind of thing drops away. The creative response we asked for was to take the form of a representation of the film footage using the raw materials we had gathered during the documentary process, alongside prepared materials the VJs had brought into the workshop. This response mimicked the creation, collation and editing process of the video materials which form the backbone of their creative practice. This sought to allow the strongly instinctive and spontaneous aspects of their practice, which are not easy to describe, to be more accurately represented through demonstration of their work. The process of creating the documentary gave us an in-depth understanding of the nuances of each VJ, and how their personal idiosyncrasies and their preferred techniques contribute to their performance. This understanding forms the basis of the personal design and development of interfaces for VJs. In the case of one of the VJs we talked to, we believed that a new interface could realise an apparent desire to dissect and collage live footage in ways impossible using its current tools. A tangible interface was created which exploited the important qualities of his current turntable interface, such as the expressive power gained through tactile and gestural interaction, whilst improving his ability to spatially manipulate his materials in the moment of performance. From the dialogue in the workshops, we were able to agree with the VJs upon the key ideas which shape their work, and as a result of this process, we were able to identify important design considerations for creating tools which will allow each VJ to enhance their work.